Video games aren't all about killing people. Some offer alternative, non-lethal ways to take out your foes so you can sleep soundly at night knowing that no one had to die for you to get the job done. Just as long as you don't look too closely at the non-lethal options, because if you think about them too hard, it becomes apparent a lot of them are at least as deadly as the lethal method you've been trying to avoid. Here are the times we took the non-lethal option with probably fatal consequences. Enjoy and beware spoilers for the following games. No Joker, and no Scorpion. Your little distraction means two deadly menaces are out on the loose. When characters from DC Comics invaded the world of Mortal Kombat in Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe, some changes had to be made, specifically to the fatalities. So DC's heroes were instead given what are known as heroic brutalities. Even the Jokers showing uncharacteristic restraint. <laughs> oh no, wait. Who are you? I am Captain Marvel. Some of those heroic brutalities are more brutal than others though, and Captain Marvel, aka Billy Batson, must not have received the memo about not straight up murdering his opponents. Perhaps the memo accidentally got sent to Marvel Comics. Easy mistake to make. Captain Marvel doesn't have a flashy heroic brutality, he just picks up his victim and jams them headfirst into the concrete. And when the concrete looks like that, I can't imagine there's much left of their head. And this is while Liu Kang's fatality has him dropping an arcade cabinet on them and they're clearly still alive underneath it. Liu Kang wins. I mean, do you two guys maybe want to swap? Anyway, 12-year-old Billy Batson, who can transform into an adult superhero, gets his karmic carfence in follow-up in Justice Gods Among Us, in his Shazam identity. <laughs> now, last time I joked about this, everyone pointed out that I was laughing at the lasering of a 12-year-old boy, to which I say this. Yes, a very annoying 12-year-old boy. Tonight, High Overseer Campbell dies by your hand. It won't be easy. He's protected by his overseers, an army of religious zealots. But if anyone can do it, you can. Your exploits are legendary. The Dishonored series really stretches the definition of non-lethal, with equipment like Billy Lurk's electrical burst, which electrocutes people. <laughs> Or those non-lethal drop takedowns where you smash someone's head against the floor several times. Then there was the time you had your target's tongues cut out and had them shipped off to be worked to death in a silver mine. See, the Pendletons got these rock mines. Have hundreds of souls working down there half a mile deep below ground. So I'm gonna shave their heads and cut out their tongues and put them in one of their own stinking mines. Yikes. But for our money, the most obviously lethal, non-lethal option in Dishonored is the one in which you're supposed to kill High Overseer Campbell, leader of militant religious group The Overseers. If you're a pacifist and you want to resolve things without killing Campbell, you can instead choose to brand him on his face with a red-hot iron with a brand that causes him to be thrown out of The Overseers and shunned by society, at which point he contracts the definitely fatal rat plague. <laughs> But hey, Campbell, at least you're not dead yet, right? It's a positive, yeah? I mean, a thank you wouldn't go amiss? Jeez. Some overseers. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. The Diamond Dogs of Metal Gear Solid 5 might seem like a bunch of weirdos living on an oil rig in the 1980s, because they are, but they're also a bunch of weirdos with a really good R&D department. Take Venom Snake's prosthetic arm for example. It's a technological marvel that operates just like a regular arm, but that can also blast off using rockets to smash people in the face, non-lethally rendering them unconscious. 
However non-lethal a piece of metal being rocket propelled into your face is or isn't, the Diamond Dogs gadget that gives me the most cause for concern is the wormhole extraction device. The WED is an upgrade for the regular Fulton extraction device, which Snake can use to non-lethally remove enemy combatants from the field by attaching a balloon to them, which is then skyhooked into a passing airplane. The wormhole version of this device ups the technological ante a little by instead creating a wormhole to Mother Base, which they say gives a 100% chance of the enemy soldier or goat or whatever reaching home safely. Which, if I'm honest, is a pretty optimistic assessment of the risk of a human being travelling alive through a wormhole. Wormhole theory states that a wormhole occurs when two singularities in different parts of the universe merge and create a tunnel between them. So as it is, you're sending your unconscious enemies into a black hole whose immense gravitational forces would tear them apart instantly. Of course, it's possible that the singularity used by Diamond Dogs is a rotating Kerr black hole, which scientists theorise people could pass through the centre of if they could avoid the tunnel collapsing instantly when they entered it, and they weren't killed immediately by all the high-energy particles they encountered. Also, the differential gravity between your head and feet as you slid across the event horizon would spaghettify you anyway. You'd pop out the other side 30 foot tall. Oh, which is definitely non-lethal, if you're Stretch Armstrong. So yeah, we're going to chalk this one up as definitely on the lethal end of the spectrum, both to the person you're sending through and, I mean, the entire planet in general, because wormholes. Don't mess with singularities, kids. Here's the lesson. Still, kudos for getting it working. Makes you wonder what else the R&D department could make if they put their mind to it. You're pretty good. You ain't here pretty good. You ain't here pretty good. You ain't here. Less impressive, that one. Silvio Caruso's family home is right across the square. The bioengineer suffers from acute travel phobia, so the Ether Corporation has installed a state-of-the-art field laboratory somewhere below ground. Expect security levels to rise as you get closer to the virus. Good luck, 47. Almost everything in Hitman is deadly. I mean, you have to actually make a conscious effort not to accidentally kill someone with a falling chandelier. Hey, wake up! Something terrible is happening. At least I do. But it is technically possible to play this game about killing people and only ever kill the target that you're supposed to. That usually means a lot of non-lethal takedowns. Those little hors d'oeuvres, so cute and tasty. It helps that Agent 47 has identified the exact spot on someone's head where you can hit them with a crowbar and they won't die. The slight snag is that you can't very well leave a bunch of people, probably in their underwear, lying around on the streets of a small Italian fishing village. So you bundle them into whatever nook you can find, leaving them to wonder how exactly they woke up in the cupboard six hours later with one of the cleaning staff. So far, so non-lethal. There is the odd hiding spot, however, that would realistically undo all of 47's conscientiously non-lethal work. Take Fabio Pavioni, the unnecessarily creepy undertaker in Sapienza's churchyard. There's a dark angel that looks over me today. A good day for business. If this mission goes belly up, I am framing that guy. Knock Fabio out in order to get the church key or the scientist's uniform in the morgue, and there's only one properly concealed place to hide him this enormous mortuary chest freezer. Get to the end of the mission and great score! No non-targets killed, says the Hitman results screen. Except, if you dump a guy in a sealed operational chest freezer, he's going to either A, freeze, B, suffocate, or C, you guessed it, freeze and then suffocate. When they finally haul poor Fabio out, he's going to be a giant human-sized popsicle, and 47 will be long gone with his five-star score. All objectives complete. Now head towards an exit. You know, I'm starting to think that Agent 47 might not be a very nice person. Play stupid. Play clever. Make the mistake of saying no. That collar on your neck will go off and take your head with it. Fallout New Vegas DLC Dead Money pits you against rogue brotherhood of steel scribe Father Elijah, who spends the entire DLC being a massive jerk who deserves to be shown the business end of a plasma rifle. Are you listening? Good. From 
now on, when I talk, listen and follow my instructions. When you do finally confront Elijah in the vault of the Sierra Madre Casino, you're given the option to fight him and finally make him pay for making you wear an explosive collar, like a Battle Royale school kid or a member of One Direction. If you're suddenly seized by conscience, however, you can choose instead to take the non-lethal option whereby you trap Father Elijah in the vault. I'm coming down. I'll meet you face to face at the vault entrance. If you resist, I'll use the collar even if it puts the vault at risk. The vault in question isn't a vault in the classic Fallout sense, being essentially a room designed to do two things. One, store gold, and two, entomb people for all eternity in the style of the cask of Amontillado. Still, while Father Elijah is definitely going to die in that vault as a direct result of our actions, the important thing is that he's going to die in that vault after a while when we're long gone, which is all it takes for us to walk out of here feeling good about what a nice, non-murdery courier we are. I can't help but feel a pang of regret though, for all that gold I had to leave behind because I was over encumbered. Where is he? When Batman first started to fight crime, he swore an oath that he would never take a life unless he was in a Zack Snyder movie. He really wanted to, or they're undead because that doesn't count. Of course, this is Batman, the crime fighter who goes around punching people in the face with spiked Kevlar gloves and leaving them unconscious miles away from medical attention in the middle of winter. So as the Arkham series wore on, we started to get increasingly convoluted justifications as to why the people Batman attacks aren't actually dead. Justifications such as his cowl scanner, which looks at the body of someone we punched out a full hour ago, who is still lying there not moving, and declares them to be unconscious. Uh-huh. Whatever you say, cowl. None of these excuses are quite so ludicrous though as Batman's insistence that his giant tank, the Batmobile, is armed with non-lethal riot suppression weapons. It's already equipped with a Vulcan gun, a 60mm cannon and actual rockets, which we will of course be firing indiscriminately around the city. But according to Bruce, it also features non-lethal slam rounds, which are a flexible plastic casing filled with 50 grams of rubber pellets. Which is totally non-lethal until you fire 10 of them at someone. Of course, with a weaponized SUV speeding around Gotham streets at 200 miles an hour, running people over and killing them is also a risk. This is why Batman also installed electroshock defenses front and back that will electrocute people if they get too close, hurling them through the air with between two and 300,000 volts. Why not combine it with some slam round shots for the ultimate non-lethal combo? <laughs> Yeah, you keep telling yourself that, Batman's cowl. Oh. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle is the answer to the question, what would you get if you crossed Mario with XCOM, that someone must have asked at some point for reasons that probably aren't all that clear to them even now. The combination works surprisingly well, resulting in a fun and accessible turn-based strategy game in which sometimes Luigi shoots people in the face with the cold, ruthless efficiency of a battle-hardened sniper. This being a Mario game, it's made clear at the very beginning that you aren't killing any of the enemy rabbits. The guns are shown to be firing ink, or honey, or some kind of energy, so everyone can rest easy that Mario isn't actually going around doming rabbits with actual guns. Also, when a rabbit loses all their hit points, they spin around and warp elsewhere, removing them from the battlefield. We can't help but feel that that shouldn't apply for the sentries, however, which are adorably themed little drones that, when activated, trundle over towards an enemy rabbit before detonating in their face. 
Grab all you want, Luigi. That rabbit is dead. Further to that, a grenade shaped like a rubber duck is still a grenade, Peach. If it's destroying brick walls, think what it's doing to those fluffy rabbits. Wow, I can see why she held on to power in the Mushroom Kingdom for so long. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. Thanks for watching this video about the non-lethal things that are very definitely lethal. But if you want to watch more videos from Outside Xbox and Outside Extra and also render me unconscious for up to 30 minutes, you can click on this up here, this is us, and down here is Outside Extra. Click on one of them or put me right out and you can go around and steal all my gold that I keep in the vault here. I'll oh. pitch it. Uh. <laughs> He's alive. He's still alive. No, I'm asleep. Non-lethal. I'm asleep forever now. Go that about your no, level that's business. Lethal, Andy. Okay, well I'll wake up at the I'll wake up after you've left the level. <laughs> I somehow know and then I'll come to. Non-lethal. Yeah. It puts them to sleep forever. Oh, they've left. They've left the level. I'm back. Okay.